Greetings and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between. I'm John Maciel, here with The Expanse Season 1, Episode 8, Salvage. Now, there was a lot that we got from this episode. You can tell there's a big build-up because we're coming close to the end of the season. So it looks like they're building up for something big to happen at the end. And I'm really excited to just get into this. Um, I went scene by scene trying to make sure I didn't miss anything. But of course, I'm, I'm probably going to miss something. You guys know me by now. I always miss little, little details here and there. But that's why you guys watch these videos. That's why you guys comment on these videos. Just to make sure that I don't lose track. So let's hop right into... The beginning of the episode. The episode opens up with Miller on the Belt Transit Ferry. He's chatting with a Mormon who brings up Miller's fear of being in open spaces. Um, I'm not sure if Miller was just playing off this scene or not, but if he did grow up inside of series the whole time and never left, it would be understandable if he actually did have this, um, I forgot what phobia it was referred to, but the fear of being out in space. Uh, so it would make sense that if he actually did have that fear. Uh, the Mormon's preparing for his journey on the Navo, which we already know is the ship Fred Johnson is in charge of building to bring Mormons to another star system. Miller asks him what happens after the 100 year journey to the planet they picked out if it ends up being nothing and there's nothing there and there's nothing of value. After all, they can't come back after such a long journey. The Mormon, while scared of that, says that they have placed their fate in God's hands and it would just mean that their search isn't over yet. With great risk comes great reward. Quote by Thomas Jefferson is what he was going to say. Uh, Miller points out rather accurately, I think, that they just might be leaving at the right time. So now we come to an asteroid with the memorable name of BA8340241112. Never forget. Uh, these were the coordinates the crew were given, uh, but there doesn't appear to be anything there. Uh, but after pulling around for a closer inspection, they find what looks to be a shuttle, and it turns out to be a stealth ship. Uh, Kenzo, who's still trying to get network access, is called by Holden to check out the stealth ship shuttle they found. Uh, Kenzo was, was thinking it's Martian because no one else can afford to build stealth, uh, but Holden says it's not Martian, which we already know that too. Uh, Kenzo's convinced that Fred Johnson, a, a terrorist in his eyes, uh, wants him to salvage the ship, but Holden insists they are not on a salvage mission. Uh, they think there could be breathable air in the ship because the hull wasn't uh, penetrated, uh, so they decide to check it out. Uh, Holden volunteers Kenzo to join them and Burton to be his bodyguard, uh, while giving Burton a not-so-subtle threat not to harm Kenzo. Uh, now we go inside the, the shuttle. Um, it doesn't look like it's actually a shuttle. It looks like a very big ship. On the outside, it looked a lot smaller. Uh, looks like there is blood on the wall at the airlock. Looks like someone got spaced before. Looks like someone else forced their way out of the airlock. We see a belter suit floating around with the name Scopuli on the back. Uh, Holden thinks this is the ship that actually destroyed the Canterbury. Uh, Alex sends a recon drone to check out the front of the ship. It looks like there are no shuttles in the shuttle bay. Everything looks empty. Whoever was there left, but I'm thinking why leave the ship intact, especially one this ad this advanced. If you're planning to to abandon ship um, with this much kind of technology on board that could be found, you'd think they would have like self-destructed the ship or something. Um, so in the engineering around the engineering room, they they turn on the reactor and see someone had cut through the hatch into the engineering bay. It looks like the same kind of thing Julie saw in episode one. It's a little hard to tell in this scene, but it looks like there's some kind of organic matter, maybe some bodies around the reactor, which would mean that Julie was actually not on the scopuli in the first episode, that I, that, which I thought she was, but was actually on the stealth ship, and this is exactly what she saw. Um, so after that, we go to the UN, where Admiral Souther and Sadavir are meeting. Souther says Tycho Station pinged the Nathan Hell approximately four hours ago. Uh, the Nathan Hale is a UN battleship. Uh, they use the excuse of emergency reactor maintenance. Uh, Sadavir is hoping they find illegal stealth tech on Tycho, uh, because even as far out as they are, they wouldn't have enough time to, to decommission and take apart everything if they are building stealth tech there. Uh, but Souther doesn't appear to believe they'll find any. Um, they argue about Holden, uh, and then get news that Frank was found dead in his home that morning. 
Uh, looks like it was a suicide. Uh, if it is, then I'm, this goes back to what we've what I've talked about with Christian before. Um, a consequence to her actions with Mars previously, in my opinion, as a result of uh, Frank being uh, kicked off of Mars, basically his home. Um, now we're back on the stealth ship. Uh, Holden and Naomi are going to take a closer look at the reactor. Uh, Alex confirms that he hasn't seen anyone else on board uh, or any signs of life on board. Uh, Burton is working on breaking into the safe and won't let Kenzo into the logs. Uh, for good reason, doesn't want Kenzo to get a message out. Uh, we keep seeing these strange crystalline goo on parts of the ship. Uh, I can't tell what they are, but that's the best way I can describe it. Uh, but the others haven't noticed this yet. Uh, it turns out the ship is the Anubis. Uh, Alex is pointing um, Alex is pointing out the same thing as I had said earlier. Uh, the ship is in perfect condition. Why would it just be abandoned? Um, Burton gets access to the nav, and the ship was going to Eros from Phoebe Station. Um, so we think that this ship now was responsible for Phoebe, um, which we had point uh, we learned from the Donager as well. Um, that we had suspected the ship was was responsible for Phoebe. Uh, suddenly, this the strange grew. Uh, I think Na Naomi referred to it as a, a nano liquid. Uh, begins to react and move. Naomi kills the power because it seems the nano liquid was drawing power from the reactor. Uh, Holden tells Burton to cut out the computer core and they start to leave. They go through a full decontamination before leaving. Holden agrees to let Kenzo go after they find Polanski on Eros. Uh, they decide that the Anubis is too dangerous and lots of torpedo to destroy it. Hmm. So that was a lot in, um, in that scene. Uh, the curious thing to me is that the, um, that, that goo actually looks like organic matter to me, but Alex didn't detect it as it being organic. Um, so is it alive? Because it certainly looked alive. Alex didn't see it as being alive. Um, is it tech? Um... It would be a strange form of AI, kind of hybrid tech, if it was. Um, very strange, though. Very strange. That's what that's what stuck out to me the most in that scene. Is the fact that even though it looks very organic to us, uh, Alex didn't detect it as a as a living thing. Uh, so now we arrive on Eros with the Belt Transit Ferry. Miller checks to see where the Anubis One A is docked. Uh, the Doc Master doesn't really care about Miller's daughter story, so he pretends to bribe him, beats him up and gets the info he needs, but is then arrested. Um, meets up with Semi there, Inspector uh, Semitimba. I think that's how you pronounce it, but we call him Semi. Uh, it looks like he's an old friend of Miller's that works with the CPM, the security company for Euros now. Uh, Semi says the CPM is just a bunch of criminals with badges. Semi actually used to work on Series 2 before getting kicked out and gave his hat to Miller as a reminder not to let your emotions get the better of you, which he's saying that what that's what happened with Miller this time. Uh, Polanski is indeed Julie, which we suspected, which I had pointed out before. Um, and she's registered at the Blue Falcon. The Blue Falcon is uh, a hotel. Um, at first I thought the Blue Falcon was a ship. <laughs> Um, so now on Tycho Station, Fred, has been, Fred Johnson has been trying to uh, decrypt the data from the chip that he uh, found on Lopez before. We find out that the Nathan Hale is two days out. Uh, they don't believe their reactor story, but Earth didn't think they would believe the reactor story either. Uh, the chip on Lopez actually has a full tactical breakdown and analysis of the Donisher's battle, down to uh, the nanosecond, I think they said. Um, Sam asks Fred Johnson what he's going to do now after showing him something else that we didn't see. And it looks like it's something Fred Johnson has seen before. Um, I'm wondering if it has to do with that uh, organic matter that um, that we saw on the Anubis. Um, because they did kill some of the crew from the Anubis on there. And it looked like they had the same kind of matter like interjected into them. Um, like when the arm was uh, rebuilding itself, you know. Um, so I'm wondering if Fred Johnson saw that and knows what the matter is. Um, now, Holden and crew are also on Eros at this point, and they arrive at the Blue Falcon Hotel. Hmm. Uh, very fine establishment, it looks like. Uh, we see Kenzo's IP scan, the Blue Falcon sign, and his piece reports, TAC team ready, police will not respond. Um, and he actually gets a signal sent out. Uh, Holden's about to check for Polanski, then Burton feels something is wrong um, with the situation. And it did seem pretty sketchy. You know, it kind of gave you that vibe. So he starts to try to slowly unzip his jacket. 
because that's where his gun is. Um, and at that moment, Kenzo takes off and a shootout starts. Uh, one of the uh, people shooting uh, Holden's crew is about to throw a grenade before Miller shows up and knocks it away and then kills the guy. Uh, Miller recognizes Holden. I don't think they personally know each other. Um, they think it just recognizes Holden from the uh, transmissions. Um, afterwards, they see a, on a comm badge that Kenzo had sent out the signal. Um, so, so um, yeah, Burton, it looks like Burton in his uh, um, infinite paranoia was right about uh, getting rid of Kenzo before, but, um, it is what it is. Um, yeah, um, but that makes sense from what we've learned about Holden, where he seems to be more of a protector type. Um, and I don't think it really matters, uh, who you are or how suspicious you are at this point. If you can avoid, um, killing someone or something, then he will. Um, Except for the Anubis, because um, I don't think those things were really life forms. Um, at least not um, what we would consider life forms in a way. Um, so Miller sends a message to Semi and warns the others that uh, the next people that come in are going to have badges. So basically CPM. Uh, they make their way up to room 22 where Julie should be. There's no answer at the door and Miller breaks in the door. Uh, the room looks empty and it stinks. I think uh, Burton said that it smells like sweat, zinc, and ozone. I know he at least said sweat and ozone. I think the other thing he said it was zinc. Very weird. Burton is very good at senses of smell, I think. Um, Holden and others don't know that Polanski's real name is Julie Mao right now. Um, Naomi uh, notices that every power source is pulled out in the room. They thought that there was a struggle, but it was actually them removing all the power. Um, Miller goes into the bathroom and they find Julie covered in that nano goo that they found on the Anubis. And that's where our episode ends. So, episode eight. I mean, it was a great episode. Um, it was hard for me to really try to critique everything that was going on, um, aside from abandoning the ship. Um, I think we'll find out why the Anubis was abandoned. Uh, and if they don't give a reason, I'll be disappointed about that because that's a lot of tech to just leave behind, you know? Um, what if it wasn't uh, Holden that found it? What if it was, um, I don't know, Earth, right? Or Mars, um, rather than someone like them. Um, so next I have episode 9 coming up. Um, I was told in another comment that episode 9 and 10 were released together. Like there was supposed to be like an hour and a half long season finale. If that is the case, I will watch them back to back and I will review them together. Just let me know in the comments, confirm for me that they were indeed meant to be watched together as a season finale. And that's how I'll do it. I'll do it as it was meant to be watched. Okay. Um, hope you guys enjoy this video uh, as much as I enjoyed the episode too. And I will catch you all next time. Hey everyone. Did you enjoy today's video? Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Did you hate today's video? then be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It's really the only way you can tell. Thanks.